Late Iron Room. Anyway, I appreciate some of you are the ultimate troopers. Um, yeah. I feel bad that it took us this long to get our shit together. Yeah. You know, the good thing is that we're not finished with next week's episode, so I think we, <laughs> we'll be able to speak on this yeah. and apologize properly. But with that being said, I have some spooky stories. At least a couple. And by a couple, I mean I got quite a few. All right. So this listener submission, yeah, that's fair. It does happen to everyone. Yeah. Especially us. Um, so this is from Julie, and it takes place in Tennessee. I'm so and excited to hear it this. It took place a long time ago. This is 2008. Wow. I was 16. I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. I was 16. You know what's nice about this, though? When we were upstairs, we were very level with the camera, where right now... It's kind of coming down nice. on us, and it, I feel like this is a better angle. It probably is. A I better feel like angle. this is more uh, approachable. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys see anything terrifying from behind me, don't say anything. <laughs> don't talk about how old you guys were when you were eighteen. I was just. Uh, I want to know. Uh, I was ten. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I had a Jeep Wrangler and I was learning how to drive. I failed my first test not because I was reckless. I was uh, too cautious. Dude, I failed like three tests. I stopped at a stop sign and then I waited and then I went up to the edge and I stopped again, and she and I got She's flagged. Like, Dunzo. Same was, age as us. Let's I go. Was, I was bad. Twenty six in two thousand eight. That's a good year. Yeah. Both of those things. All right. So this is Julie's. This is uh. This is Julie's story. You ready? Yeah. Quote, my mom and our next door neighbor were great friends. We often got together for dinner, as was the case on this particular night. I decided to ride with her husband, Jerry, to the local cafe to grab burgers and bring back to the house. It was later in the evening, just in the dark, and we were nearing the end of the road. This is a rural area, so the road was surrounded by fence and pasture on both sides. Absolutely no street lights. Suddenly... A hu- whenever there's suddenly, you know, mm-hmm. you know, suddenly a huge figure ran across the road ahead, causing Jerry to slam on his brakes. This was a 30 second experience that I will remember for the rest of my life. It was far enough ahead of us that it was outside of the bright illuminating area of my headlights and it remained in shadow. It was about eight feet tall and on two feet with a broad body bro it ran across the road and over the fence then disappeared from view into the dark oh god it thinks i'm trying to type i promise i'm not this is my story to type. Hey, see this is the live thing well, see this is something we'd fix in editing yeah in editing <laughs> it would just go right into editing the next thing that i'm about to say such a friend uh the closest thing that i compare this was a large bear okay. and everyone that we've ever told the story to has tried to rationalize it as such However, our area of Tennessee is not mountainous, and while pit plentiful in deer and the rare cougar, bear are essentially unheard of. Also, while bear lumber on two feet, I personally have never seen them running like a human. This is exactly mm-hmm. what we said William in William's story. story, episode six, one of my favorites. Jerry never commented on what he thought it was, and honestly, and was honestly just shaken by the experience to the point of not ever wanting to talk about it again. But to this day, I really truly believe that i julie had an encounter with bigfoot i've since turned Uh into a total bigfoot junkie and read basically every article i can find it's a running joke between my husband and i as he's a non-believer in essentially everything to the point that i have a bigfoot sticker on the back of my car just because it makes both of us laugh that i'm such a fangirl i've never heard another report in the area but i firmly believe that jerry and i did not see a bear unquote pretty good little story yeah it's tough reading on the spot y'all i know uh just finished watching part one what are y'all talking about part one of what i don't know i lost it i know yeah there's i hate about twitch too i know you get into it like what am i supposed to do stop reading to to read more they're still talking about age that's fine yeah so that is julie's story actually it reminds me of mine in the in just the aspect of stopping and seeing something cross in front of you but I definitely didn't see a Bigfoot. What were no. you thinking? When she said Bigfoot, you went, oh, what were you thinking? I was thinking it was like, I didn't really have a thought. I didn't know it was going to be Bigfoot, though. I was thinking like like something more dangerous, like a, like a more Wendigo. More dangerous. Or something like that. Huh. You, 
the big body though doesn't make me think Wendigo. No, I know. No, I don't know what I thought. Just something giant, I guess. But then again, like what were we th- what were we thinking that William saw? Skinwalker. Which William? Eh. All right. I don't know. I feel like that's just like the go-to. <laughs> might be. You know what we didn't? You know what I? Hmm. What if? Something about ghosts. Something about ghosts. No, I was thinking about ghosts. <laughs> and For what? Uh, well, from your story that we did today. Oh. And it's just like, what if, what if there's no such thing as an intentional human ghost? What if, go human ghosts are just lasting impressions or like trauma or energy, and anything paranormal you experience ghostly is something else. Something else. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Because then, where are all the the ghosts that aren't? Victorian or old or you know what I mean it's like there's 7 billion people I mean there are newer ghosts mm. this is completely off subject I was thinking about it earlier so now I just want to talk about off that. topic that was actually like <laughs> I kind of forgot y'all were here for a second <laughs> uh, I, I got very little you know what I can show you now I always talk about how little sleep I get this is a visual platform now you, you're not used to this in, in the visual don't tell my mom though. She gets very upset when she finds out how little I sleep. Yeah, none of us are yeah, prepared so for this. N- no one, no one, tell my mom. I don't care about this snoozing thing. All you right. can snooze to catch up on some of your rest. This is see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, look at that. It says fair, but I, I don't, I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't think it's. I think it's being kind by yeah. saying fair. This, this, like, this is the type of content y'all want. Ben's in here? I don't know, is he? I thought you said Ben. No, I didn't say Ben. No, Ben's probably asleep. Probably. He, he appreciates sleep. Dang. I really enjoy that story, though. As much as like a shorter listener submission goes, I mean, I enjoy most listener submissions, but I like that. Like, it's it's slice of life in a way, right? Like, like just because you experience something one time doesn't mean you'll ever experience anything like it again. Yeah, which is almost a bummer, especially if you really enjoyed it. Well, that you know what she became a huge Bigfoot Enthusiast, hunter, yeah. so I guess she probably would safely want to. I here's here's a unique thing that differs from my story. She didn't talk about the overwhelming feel, feeling of dread. Yeah, it was more so like the shock of seeing yeah, something. Yeah, like, oh god, that's big. Yeah. Um, oh, I was thinking not dear. That's what I was thinking. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I was thinking about our new merch that just dropped. Ah, is that a segue? <laughs> <laughs> Um, cause it looks a little bit like that, not deer. Yeah. Jalen killed it with that. Des- all the designs. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Three or four hours of sleep's fair. That's true. I've, I've gotten poor sleep before. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, all right, Charlie, hit us with another my next listener story, submission. My next story is a Sophia story. And if everyone remembers what a Sophia story is, it means they want to be anonymous. Yeah. Uh, we're going to try and make this a thing. Sometimes we start things. And then they go away. But we're going to try Sophia and keep... Sophia is our Jane Doe. Yeah, if, if there's an anonymous story, that person is now a Sophia. Now, if you're Sophia and you sent us a Sophia story... It's going to be a little, uh, a little strange. You. Probably little just strange. change that name. Yeah. Um, and then they'll know it's Sophia, though. Awkward. We just won't say it's a Sophia What if story? every listener for the rest of the podcast's name is Sophia? Tyler. You with me? <laughs> you good? I got fair amount of sleep. <laughs> I think I'm okay. So this is from Connecticut. Okay. Uh, 2021. That's, that's where LeBron made his this decision. Is literally one paragraph. Okay. I was walking <laughs> my dog one night, and a bright light appeared in the sky. Ah. By the time I grabbed my phone to take a picture, the light was gone. About a week later, I was outside with my dog around 7 p.m., and the light appeared again out of nowhere. I grabbed my phone and was able to take a picture of the light. Once again, it disappeared with a blink of an eye. I have a video of it disappearing, but it's hard to see in the video. I would love to send you the video or a photo, and maybe you have an explanation for what the strange light in the sky could have been. Yeah, it's an alien. <laughs> it's an alien, bro. I figured it out. And clearly you don't have the iPhone 13, because the iPhone 13 can do anything. <laughs> iPhone 13 is magic. Let's say way to, like, are we sponsored? Are we sponsored? I wish. If we were sponsored by Apple, I don't think we'd have to be doing this outside with, like, mixed matching furniture. Although, Not, I'm, I, glad I enjoy my is, furniture I'm glad this is actually working out now. I feel I feel good now. Knock on wood. I know, like... I can't wait to see the YouTube mashup. It, it's going to be like... Oh, um, no. This is probably just going to be this one. I'm sorry. You know how much editing? No. That's it's fine. Probably, it's going to be... Maybe... Should we redo? No. Redo? No. The stories? No. 
it's they're gone. Yeah, that's sad. Um, no, I like this. I if if anybody's having any issues with either the audio or the video, keep it to yourself. Yeah, say please just tell me just it's keep, your fault. Keep it to yourself. It's happening on your end, and I'm sorry. It's happening. Yeah, but if this is what we can do every time, I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is much better. Did anybody? It's all working now. Good. Thank Did goodness. anybody notice that the background is from Battle of the Believability though? Does anybody watch that? This was like on the fly. It's 7.52. <laughs> We're looking at a black screen, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But we're here now, so it's all good. We're here. Life occurs. That's, you know, that's like life finds a way, and uh, life occurs. You haven't watched the Let's battles yet? What are you waiting for, the final? <laughs> She's like, waiting for the playoffs. I know. It's not even on Patreon. It's just YouTube. Everybody can watch it. Yeah, anyway. it's, just, it's free. It's just freeze. That's okay. Like 12 minutes. I feel like... The fact that there's 20 of you right now, like, I wouldn't give Rhett and Link three chances. I probably would. I probably would. I probably <laughs> no, would. you would. I would. But I, I just want to say right now that I, like, truly appreciate yeah, the fact I that you. y'all Thank you. Ca- actually came back. Um, I, think, I know. I would have been like, well, bye. Oh, I, good luck with uh, the job. I hope you, I hope you get a suit. Not just to, not just to be a patron, but just so that you can make just money. Just good luck with the – it's hard out there. It's <laughs> – Guys, stay stay safe on these streets, as my boy Matt says. Um, I hope y'all liked the episode series designs. That's oh been yeah, something... those just came out today. Yeah, it's been cooking. Yeah, the Fresno. Yes. What? Um, the Fresno Nightcrawler. Oh yeah. Those have been. I think it was when we had a January production meeting with us and and Ben, producer Ben. January, I think, was when it was brought up that uh, yeah, that I want to do, do this it. because I've always thought of it as like your favorite song, right? Like think about your favorite musician and mm-hmm. your favorite album, right? I'm not saying we're your favorite podcast or anything, but imagine your favorite musician and your favorite album by that musician, and you found out that they were going to make a unique shirt or design <laughs> for every song on that album. Play the chat. I we're gonna do Hat Man, okay? <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna happen. I'm, I'm Hat Man tonight. Um. But how cool would that be? You know, like your favorite band, favorite song. I get a shirt for it. Oh no, That's okay. Logan, hit us up. Let, no, we can get you a Logan, shirt. Logan, let us know what shirt you want. Um, it's tough because I'm confined by what our platform lets us do. Mm-hmm. But you can choose different shirt types. So we had a we had a conversation with someone else about the same situation. Yeah. So send us a DM, Logan, and Don't tell us tell it. us what design you're looking at, and and we'll go from there. Um, but anyway, and look, the chat's not even as far back as it was before. No, it's much. much I want to take a screenshot of this though to let people in the world know that, you know, we kind we kind of got it. You know, that believing the bizarre is very close to the top. I'm gonna have to bring that down. Uh, yeah, that's okay. We we got a whole world to play with because at the end of this, I feel like we're gonna announce something, right? Are we? I think so. I'm a little out of my mind. Um, what? It's okay. What um what what design is your favorite, Charlie? Because I know design is my favorite. Mm, I don't like any of them. They all are garbage <laughs> between you. Uh, let me look at them really quick. Have you ever looked at them? Yes, I've looked at them. Many, many times. Many, many, many times. It, I'm not saying that the Not Deer is your guys' favorite design, but analytics, statistics, and math says that the Not Deer is your favorite design. And remember, if you get one today, tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday, and all you have to do is like when you get that, like, hey, oh, somebody put it in the chat. Thank you, Logan. When somebody... Um, when, when you know when you get that like oh thanks for your purchase just screenshot that send it to us and and I'll ask you for your shipping address because I probably won't have it and then you get a free sticker and you get a free not dear print which is the same as the shirt that's gonna be signed by Charlie and I um, I think my favorite design is probably the not dear it's so good it's really good. it's so we were like Jalen you're great can you do a background can you do color mm-hmm. and listen I don't know if Jalen's on right now and and Jalen I love you I'm not making I'm not picking on you your first deer you sent us <laughs> those were some I love those them. were some Mick deer <laughs> they had Mick apple he literally said he texted me and said they eat some Mick apples <laughs> Which is fine, but like I, it, it didn't. It looked like it was like a cow and a deer got together. So cute. And, I mean, you know, you only see them late at night, so what they do is what they do. Um. Anyway, it looks great. I think the not deer is the one of the better designs. Of <laughs> it's fantastic. It oh, came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but Jalen, no, you know, we know, you know how much we appreciate you, yeah. and I'm also very tired. Uh, so Let yeah. Let me my next story. 
if any, yeah, if anybody gets one, just send us a screenshot confirmation. Yes. Either and if we don't, if we, we're going to believe you, if if you if we miss it or right away, just make sure we respond. Keep hitting us up until we respond because our inbox right now is like a war zone. Yeah. But with that said, this next story from Josh. <laughs> You had no idea what a deer looked like. <laughs> Jalen, you know, you, you killed it, Jalen. Everybody loved him. We've gotten so many compliments, and it it's all from you. We we just throw the idea against the wall, and you make it a reality. So, yeah. yeah so, this, just, next, this next story is from Josh oh, from sh- Florida. Shut up now. I don't know how to say that word. Let me see. Pananofsky. It's Florida. It's somewhere in Florida. Um, okay. It says... <laughs> years experience and says since the Native Americans. <laughs> so I'm not. We didn't vet these. Listen, here we, we go. Can I? Can, you guys want a spoiler? You guys want a spoiler? I want a spoiler. We just did, and and we love the guy. Nothing wrong with the guy. He's an awesome guy. We just did a a <laughs> we're recording an episode where, where a ghost is called Blackie. <laughs> so we don't take ownership no. of the stories. We mm-hmm. just. Tell the stories. Just tell the stories. We, um, so go ahead. Okay. So it goes goes like this. So this isn't exactly a huge experience, but more of an oddity. If you go to Penanofki, Florida, and (laughs) use the airboat company, Tom and Jerry's, that's an ice cream company, Tom and Jerry's airboat rides, they take you around the swamp area and it's an alligator wildlife viewing tour. In one section of the tour, they start to point out old Native American traditions like bending trees used as directions. As you go down this canal, you start to see hundreds of birds flying around in circles. Once you get closer, they explain how it's a small intent area where Native Americans used to have funerals. It's a sacred area, and one of those bent trees actually points to it. When you are in the inlet looking, you in, you start to notice hundreds of birds on the branches and the surrounding trees. They explain that the birds will take turns diving into the water in a way to bathe, almost, have, almost, and they don't fight, well, to bathe and almost, and they don't fight. They go one by one, and sometimes they get thousands in a day. Another interesting thing is that it's super clean. Tons of birds every day doing this little ritual and zero visible poop or bad smell of the birds themselves and they aren't screaming i think i remember that them not being loud so all in all it's not really an experience for me except that i did see one but you guys might find super interesting that the birds do this bath thing in the woods (laughs) okay well i appreciate that he enjoys the show I'm not sure if that's actually paranormal or just an interesting... Wait, who sent you that one? Josh. His name is Josh. Oh, yep. Man. I did this I did this really weird thing. Like you said, we don't vet them. It just, I mean, sometimes those aren't really... It is what it is. We kind of made a, a decision on this live stream that we were going to <laughs> mess up twice. No, I'm just kidding. That we were going to just knock out some of the shorter ones. And mm-hmm. that's that's uh, that's what we're here. So. Shorter one. It definitely, if there's any bird lovers out there. I'm not sure I would have made it. that into an episode. So. I was in the middle of this. In the middle of what, man? Oh, screenshotting? Letting people know. Let the people know. Come on down. Listen, this is so unusual because I feel so free when we're recording. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, birds aren't real. That's an episode. <laughs> um, I yes, always feel is. so free. When we're recording, because I know any dumb crap I say, Charlie can, can edit, edit out. out. And I'm actually a little happy that I'm very tired right now, because I would probably be... Be super censoring yourself. I'd be like, well, not that I say bad things, No, but... no, no. <laughs> it makes it sound like Tyler's awesome. Uh, yeah. Always doing terrible things. That's not Always. true. Okay, so let's get to our next story. Yeah. This is from Delilah. Delilah mm. lives in South Cali. And uh, you hear, I've said this before, I think, on the podcast. I love the interpretations when it comes to years. Because yeah, what I meant when I made the form was what years did your paranormal experience happen? And some people are like, you know, some From. people are like 2004. Some people are like two months, you know. And then 
they must have meant like how old they were, 18. But it doesn't matter because it's up to your interpretation. Right, I enjoy the interpretations as well. This is going to fit a little bit with what you just said. I don't think it's about birds, but we're going to go into this. All right. Um, Quote, I live in an old small town with Native American ties. I see. Mm, And birds. I'm assuming they didn't say that. All my life. Capital, my family and I have experienced strange occurrences. Anything from light bulbs exploding, whistling in your ear, which I would hate. Oh, no. Loud, pounding footsteps and unexplainable events on our land. Behind the scenes, if this was going to be in a main episode, I would immediately email me back, email them back and say, please describe what you mean by unexplainable events. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not so much as a haunting of a house, more like the whole land is. The experience that sticks with me is I was 15 sitting on my roof smoking and I watched something walk down the road. It was a shadow of a humanish thing and it walked with the shadows. Mm. I watched it walk into our woods and it hid behind a tree and then it popped its head out from behind that tree. No one likes being out outside at dark, and no matter who you ask, someone has an experience. Uh, that's a separate thing. Uh, that was her kind of her, her opinion. <laughs> Unquote. I think it would be really... Okay. Like, the popping the head around a tree thing is inherently creepy, because oh. that's like... That's like scary movie type thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's just... It's a bug. It's all right. a big old bug. He's like... It's Mothman. I, I think that is Mothman. He's like, I like the show, guys. <laughs> I appreciate... <laughs> Keep you, all the good work. I appreciate you made my episode 22 minutes. <laughs> Must yeah, have done a ton of research. Nah, I don't, I don't okay. know how long it was. No, anyway, sorry. What I was saying is the the popping the head around the tree thing is what you would would be scary if it was like a horror yeah. movie. Oh, we just talked about it in the Doppelgangers episode. Remember the kid saw his own doppelganger pop its head around the tree. Yes. But is that but I that's the detail I'm leaving on the table. Mm-hmm. This is what I think is the most interesting detail of that story. Watching this thing intentfully hide. Yeah. Isaac, we were outside because it was so hot in my attic that it made everything lag. Yeah. But um Mothman, because Loveland Frogman's not real. Hey. Um, Come no, on now. No, imagine seeing something that's paranormal, weird, strange, intently hide. That's That's scary. the creepy part. Like, yeah. the popping and the looking at you, obviously no one likes to be seen, but at the same time, watching something from a distance purposefully hide, that's terrifying. It had... We're not talking Faye. We're talking Loveland Frogman. And well, he I had, think it might be Faye. He it? had the Perfect. biggest opportunity to eat me. I literally went to his house, essentially, <laughs> last Halloween. And I sat down. And <laughs> outside his house. Outside his house. And I said... We went to his I home. went Tommy Lee Jones on him. I said, eat me! <laughs> and he said, I'm good. He said, I'm good, fam. No, but do you, you get... Like, you know how I, I like to find those little details. Yeah, that's I think, a good one. I think watching, like... Like, okay, even a human, right? Like, let's say you're on your porch and, and you don't think you're being seen. Right. You're on your porch and you see someone walking very peculiarly. They, they look like a human, but either way, it just looks strange. And then you see them look over their shoulder and then they go and they duck behind something. Like, just that in itself is, like, creepy. Yeah, no, I would hate that. I would hate to see that. Oh, <sighs> man. Sorry. Yes. All right, so here's the next story. Are you guys... We'll wait five minutes. For Someone the asked um, something about the new shirts. They said they were new to Twitch, and they were worried about the whole oh. deal that was up there. Oh, okay. Up um, a little more. A little more. Where? Right there. Right here. Yeah. Hey, guys. Haven't been on Twitch. Not sure how it works. What's to do with the new merch? Okay. So, today, we just dropped episode series designs by the awesome artist Jalen. Basically, we took episodes that we really liked and had images or ideas or jokes that came out of it turn into their own specific designs. Um, so those are all launched. If you go to our Instagram, believe in the bazaar, check out that, or even I think some of them are on Facebook, um, or our website, go to believe in the bazaar.com and then go to shop our merch. They're the ones at the top, but so that, so shirts with designs that are very specific to particular episodes. We want to keep these going, but right now we have six, but anyway, if you buy one today or tomorrow or anytime this weekend and you take a screenshot and you send it to us either by email or by DM or anything like that, um, you'll get a free sticker 
and Charlie and I will sign a not dear print and send it to you. The only thing is we'll need your shipping address because our merch platform doesn't show us those details. It's pretty pretty hands off, which is you all would be very depressed to see what we get from a sale, but that's okay. Cause it's not <laughs> about that. I'm excited. The, the idea that somebody yeah. could be wearing something believing in the bazaar is... It's not really about oh, us. You don't have to apologize for me repeating. I'm, I'm like a broken record. It's, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's all ingrained in here. All right, so the next story from Marcy. Um, it takes place in Baton Rouge, which a place I'd love to go. Baton Rouge. Hang out with... Uh, it says since Drew Brees. 2017, so I think it started in 2017. Drew Brees was there in Well, whatever. Do you want to hang um, out with Drew Brees? No. Don't actually hate him. Um, quote, when we bought our house, we were not told that the lady that lived here before us had passed away in the house. The neighbors actually told us uh, she passed away supposedly peacefully in her sleep. However, they did not know she had passed until the unseen neighbor called the family or the family uh, did a welfare check. She had passed two. She had passed away two weeks before that, so she was dead for two weeks. When the family sold the house, they were very quickly. They, they sorry, they were very quick with the closing and took our bid on it. They even took $30,000 off because of the foundation issues. There isn't one. Pretty much since we moved in, I always hear my husband... Sorry. Pretty much since we move in, I always hear when I am in the shower, my husband talking to me, or it would be the opposite. One time my husband was alone, and he heard someone talking near the bathroom, and this time he was not in the shower. He thought I had gotten home from work. No one was there. He made a video. He made a video of our garbage can lid moving back and forth without air conditioning on or any other wind moving it. Moving forward a couple months with just the talking happening randomly, we got security cameras for the inside and outside so we can monitor the cats or if someone breaks in. One night, we went to bed and had the cameras on. My son had decided to sleep on the couch because of my kid because my kids randomly do that, especially on the weekends. The camera only goes off when there is a noise or movement. Something was hovering over him and flew right over the camera. I think it looks like an orb. It's a perfect circle and definitely not a bug or a dust speck. Its movement set off the cameras. Now, I'm not sure if the orb was a guardian angel or the ghost of the lady that passed or just a random lost soul. What do you guys think? Um... I find it interesting that you guys ask us questions in these, like, what do you guys think, or can you help me figure this out? We're just, I think we've talked about it before, we're just the one-on-one class. Like, we we know some stuff, but we're not experts. Um, no. I'll, no. If you asked me what I think that is, I would imagine it's, if it is an orb and, like, a spirit, it would be the, the lady that passed in the house, right? Especially if you're hearing talking. I don't know. I... Pff- the things that camera picks up is so creepy. Um, <laughs> well, we're late too, so don't worry about Orca it. Orca the Whale, I love that name. Also, do you guys think orbs can make sound? Oh my gosh. Sorry, that's... Now, following that logic, it's... it's... I wish I could see the video. It's so hard to talk about a video you've never seen. At face yeah. value... I mean, yeah, absolutely. I believe in orbs. I've seen orbs, so I definitely think that's what it could have been. It's just so tough. Because, dude, remember Joey's baby cam? Yeah, and all those like It was like Star Wars going to hyperspace. <sighs> that's scary. Yeah, that's crazy. That's See, that's like that snapshot paranormal experience. I know. I know. They're like, I have this HD gorgeous video of Bigfoot. I'll send it to you guys sometime. <laughs> and then we never get it. And then we're left wanting and wishing. I saw a Bigfoot, you know, taking a shower, and I took a picture of it. Are you ready for the next story? I agree. Baby monitors are very scary. Wait. Oh, they create EVPs. Okay. So here is my theory. You guys, listen. You guys don't need to listen to next week's episode because I have all these... We were recording it before this, so I just have all these thoughts in my head from what we were talking about earlier. What if... So, okay, scene. You're in your your living room. You're sitting down, and your cat and or dog, whatever you prefer, is over on the rug, 
that you didn't want, but you had to buy it because it was on sale. And the cat is looking up at the corner, and its head's cocked, and it's looking at something, and you know it's looking at something. And and let's say there's an orb up there. What if the orb is making all this the most terrifying sound creepier than any James Wan film and it's just absolutely terrifying but because the like, animal ears are so much more sensitive it's like when the the kids in class have the like the mosquito Mosquitoes. mosquito sound you know and then but you're just sitting there you got big bang theory on you don't care you just it's nothing but in all that conversation came out from the idea of whether or not an orb actually makes sound because normally they're in pictures or videos or you might catch one with your eye but it's very visual so i i don't have a i don't know all my rugs are great (laughs) they're not all expensive um but they're great all right so let's move on to our next story this one is from emma sophia which means she didn't want us to know her last name (laughs) so it's emma sophia Could just left it off uh she's from abruzzo italy Oh, Italy. Yeah, I don't wow. know if that's how you say it, but... Abruzzo. Abruzzo. We're going to get canceled. If, is any, anyone Italian? You're Italian. I'm Italian. I'm half Italian. Nobody's from Hungary, so I can't... I'm, I, I don't have the right to make any jokes. Maybe the dog was hungry. Maybe. I'm hungry. <clears throat> so here's, uh, here's Emma Sophia's story. Bro. Quote. In Abruzzo... And uh, Molise, you think that's Molise? Yeah, Molise, Italy. There's a lo- oh god, oh my god. There's a local cryptid called the Luomo Servo or Cuervo. That's that's more like Spanish. <clears throat> Luomo Cuervo. I don't know. Sure, I'll just and, go with it. But you know what it means? Do you know what it means? Lumo. It means the deer man. Are you sure? The de- she told me. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, it means the deer man. There's okay. no way that I would know that. Um, it's the deer man, which I feel like is like the stepbrother to the not deer. Uh, something. Um, his head is one of a deer, but his body is humanoid, similar to Krampus or a Wendigo. I hate that. His existence symbolizes the forces of nature that men can't tame, and also has very strong ties to the night and the moon. I don't live in Abruzzo, and it's very... But it's very near to my region, and I usually go there to camp and hike since the scenery is beautiful. I wish I had water. One time, though, I was in the car and a couple of my friend, with a couple of my friends, and we happened to have to stay the night in town due to really bad weather. So we slept in a really quaint hotel, but none of us slept much that night. I was awoken by fe- a feverish feeling. I felt hot and groggy, but I remember distinctly seeing a shadow in the corner. I could see the form of the horns, and in the moonlight, I could see the fur, and its bony pale finger was pointed at me as it was whispering my name in an unsettling, normal voice. Oh my god. I fell asleep soon after, still feeling unwell, but believing that it all had just been a nightmare. That's so creepy. In the morning, though, my friends told me that they all had a similar version of the dream, that in some way or another... This dream that they all shared, they all had, included a hybrid, this creature hybrid, calling them by their full name. I didn't like believing the story much, though it seemed absurd and unreal, but in the dark, I can still imagine its bony fingers and its dark silhouette. Whenever I go back to Abruzzo, I'll make sure to cover the windowsills and doorstep just in case this time he wants to visit again. And she said, I'm sorry if there's spelling mistakes, I'm still trying to learn English. Well, her submission was a lot better than some English people said. (laughs) <laughs> unquote that was creepy that was really creepy. It, it's like it, it's like you have that moment it's creepy it's like a dream a dream sequence and it's like okay whatever. i like how she said a normal voice yeah i like i love the details that people give me because they're always normal like like you guys kind of hear the reiteration of the way that charlie and i tell the story but i love reading the way and i try and keep as much of the author in it as mm-hmm. possible because it's their story but like there are, there, it's always going to be kind of like a through our lens, so to speak. But like just reading, when you read things word for word, which I've, I feel like I've been doing more and more lately, it's they people say things depending on where you are, where you're from, what you've experienced, who your family is. Everyone says things in different ways, and I love when there's something done so differently than what I would say. It's just amazing. But like the description, the bony finger, like yeah, you said the normal voice, yeah, the that's whispering, so <laughs> the stage whisper. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. You, you uh, can tell them that. No. 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 I've told I mean, enough. I've told enough from I, people. That's need, not gonna make it in the episode. People need to. Uh, I complimented a story that Charlie did in the episode we were recording today, and I was like, "What a great detail! You can really tell <laughs> about the person based on that detail." And Charlie's like, "I added that myself." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Well, cut it. That. Just cut it. It doesn't matter. It's left on the the chopping block." All right. So this next story is from Jade, Jade. from Arizona. Years experienced, 2019, 2020. I was in Arizona in 2019. At some point, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie got so scared. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, thank you, Claire. Thank you so much. Did you hear me say I wish I had water? Yeah. You're thank the best. You. I appreciate that. What, they're both mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just dumps it on himself. What does yours say? I don't know. I, mine says I work hard so my cat can have a better life. Mine says if it's a choice between you and my cat, I choose my cat. <laughs> Cheers. Mazel. Salute. So, All right. So it goes like this. So I'm currently 17 years old. From the ages of 15 to 16, I had a visitor. Hmm. Now, we don't live in this house anymore, and I haven't heard or felt him since we moved out. So I'm assuming he was connected to the house. I believe, I believe that everything that happened was true, and it was some dark energy. The first time I hear him, the first time I heard him, was when me and my friend Sophia were over for an after-school sleepover. We had been talking when suddenly we heard knocking on my window. Now we both went quiet. But we thought of nothing. We thought nothing of it and went back to talking. About five minutes later, my lights in my room flickered along with another set of taps in my window. Me and her at the same time started to freak out and we ended up sleeping in, different, in a different room that night. Nothing else happened for three weeks before he returned. It was laid out and I was on my phone before going to bed when I was I heard, when I heard a scraping outside. My room... Hmm. Let me just try the whole sentence again. It was laid out and I was on my phone before going to bed and I heard a scraping outside my window at 1.32 a.m. I remember my hair on the back of my neck standing up and my body freezing. Um, I wanted to run away from my room. The want to run away from my room was prominent. I turned back to look at my window and I could see the silhouette of a man sitting outside of my window. It felt like two minutes before he stood up and walked away. I looked at my phone to see the time, and it was 4 a.m. The next day, I went out to take the trash, and I saw one of our outside chairs by my window, so I grabbed it and put it back. That same time, the next night, I woke up by a scraping and a silhouette of a man that was back, except this time, he knocked my window and waved. It made me freak out, and... and and I ended up jumping from my bed and running to my parents' room. Neither of them believed me since he was gone when we got back to my room. He wasn't there the next few days. The next time he came, I could feel his anger, but he didn't sit down. He started to bang his hand against my window. I started to cry and have a panic attack. My dad ended up ru running in, and he was gone. The next morning, my window had a crack in it from the middle spider webbing out to the whole window. And we moved shortly after that. End quote. Wow. That just may be a dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's still scary. Yeah, no, it's frightening. No, I, like, paranormal? I don't know, but it yeah. actually, it's probably more threatening than most of the things we talk about. Yeah, no, that's really scary. Yeah, like, normally, like, a paranormal encounter could literally just be something walking in front of you. Like that, that, uh, like Julie, I think it was Julie. Who yeah. saw the thing when she was driving with Jerry. Yeah. Um, but, like, this is, like, I feel like you're actually in danger. Yeah, that's really scary. I don't like that. I are they, like, I are like they making water. fun of my stutter? I don't think they're making fun of your stutter. Okay. Well, I, was, I was stuttering on that one. See, like, we would say all the time, editing is our friend. Um, so you guys want more live shows? Here we are. Oh, I literally almost said her name. I, I was like, not this, to do that. This one is, this is from Sophia. Yeah. Thank you, Sophia. Did for, you hear my subtle Sophia in that? 
The friend's name was the Sophia. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah. Uh, we all know a Sophia somewhere. So this is from Sophia. Sophia is from Idaho. Oh. And this takes place in 2014. And I said, please give us as much detail as possible about your experience. And this is what Sophia said. This is actually a really well-written one, if I remember correctly. Quote, I've had a few paranormal activities from things flying off my table at my apartment while I'm talking to someone to seeing apparitions apparitions as a child. But the most prevalent experience I have ever was when I was in a junior whenever when I was a junior in high school. I was always lab- labeled the artsy type by my class. So when it came time to pick committees for junior prom, it was natural for me to be part of the decorating committee. Flash forward to the week of prom. I was late getting to the old middle school gym where we were having prom. By the time I got there, it was lunchtime, and I had already ate, but no one else on the committee had, so I decided to stay behind while everyone else went to lunch. Oh, my computer's about to die. Charlie, um, why don't you tell them something? Okay, I will talk. Um, Should I tell another story? Yeah, it's not another story. Alright, I'm going to tell another story. Um, This one's pretty long, so I'm going to tell this one. Uh, this is from, okay, this is from Sam, and it's a, it's a bit of a long one, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tell us my favorite color. My favorite color is purple. Um, I keep hearing noises from over there, and it's freaking me out a little bit, not gonna lie. So this happens at his house and his friend's house from the years 20 to 22. So there's a lot of them might be messy in this story, and basically there's a demon in my room. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, we're chill now, but in the beginning, he would do a lot. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it started at my friend's house one night. I was sleeping over, and there was this weird dream. I was... It was literally all black, and all I remember is waking up having this weird urge to go home and paint. I know it sounds weird, but yeah. So I ignored it, the feeling. I had to paint, but would not go away. Mm. That's so funny. We just got a new story submission. That's so funny. Um, hey, man. Um... So the feeling of wanting to paint did not go away. But I ended up falling asleep and not painting. I woke up exactly at 2.47 a.m. I remember because I looked at my phone and wrote down the time next morning because of what happened. But what happened that night was I woke up to a loud crash and my entire body was in pain. I looked at my bed and I saw a small creature I assumed to be a cat. So I was just like, (laughs) what the hell? I went back to bed. And all this happened in about a minute or two. So then I woke up in the morning and all my hanging plants were on the floor broke and my table stand has everything wiped off of it and I had a protection candle given to me by my grandma and it was literally just flipped upside down and I had a huge scratch on my arm. I still have the scar. I found it all really weird but shook it off because like I said I assumed it was my cat. This cat did all that. So I went out to the living room and got water or something, and my cat was on the couch. I sleep with the door closed, and there's absolutely no way she could have gotten in or out of my room, and that's when I got freaked out. That's, that's when I got freaked out. I ignored it when I was at school, and I was sleeping, and woke up in the same feeling to paint. I never ended up painting. I probably should have, but I, but I don't know. I was being stubborn, I guess. But then, when I went home, I walked in my room, and it was so cold, like freezing, And I was home alone, so I went to watch TV in the living room because my room was creepy. At this point, my dog started to whine like he was scared. And I was doing the thing that dogs do when they're scared, and they get hunched over. So I was petting him, and he would not look away from this one spot, and he screeched and started limping. At one point, I started crying and screaming. Mind you, I I have always heavily believed in paranormal activity, so I never doubted it. But I was just yelling at air saying like what did you do to him don't hurt him why are you doing this and i took my dog and we went outside 
my dog was limping and I was crying to my mom telling her about all the things that was going on but thankfully he was fine um <laughs> Back. Uh, it's okay. I'm almost done with this. Computer is about to die. Right. I told her that my room. I told her about my room, and I walked in and felt nothing. Oh, my cat also would not leave me room. Would not leave my room. Um, and it's just, it's kind of a stream of consciousness from there. Um, it doesn't really end with any conclusion. Just kind of, he's chill with a demon in his room now. I um I don't have any thoughts on that story. I wouldn't imagine you did. What are your thoughts after reading it? I th- give it give me a summary. This is like a, a test now. Um, it's not that huge. It's not a huge class. Um, basically, it's a it was a story about a kid who um was being targeted by a demon. Hmm. He thinks is a demon. I don't think it's a demon personally. What do you think, little girl? No, that would be good. It would be a demon. <laughs> yeah, no, I think. I think it was maybe, maybe a spirit, maybe a poltergeist. Hmm. Yeah, but I don't think that was a demon. Okay. Uh, I love yelling at air. Is that the story? Yeah. Okay. The kid was yelling at air, saying, what did you okay. do to my dog? Here we go. I'm going to get back to, you know, I'll just start. It was Start over. It was yeah, it was, we weren't that far in. I don't want to do Sophia that way. Sophia's been there for us <laughs> for a long time. Back to Sophia's story in Idaho, where she's the artsy type. Quote, I've had a few paranormal activities from things flying off my table in my apartment while talking, while talking to someone to seeing apparitions as a child. But the most prevalent experience I've ever had was when I was a junior in high school. I was always labeled the artsy type by my class. So when it came time to pick committee for junior prom, it was natural for me to be part of the decorating committee. Flash forward to the week of prom. I was late getting to the old middle school gym where we were having our prom. By the time I got there, it was lunchtime, but I had already ate and no one else had, so I decided to stay behind while everyone else went to lunch. That was like the previously on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, The gym was decorated so that there was heavy-duty fishing line strung from the basketball hoop, from hoop to hoop, with large rolls of paper draped over them. In the middle of the gym... There was another paper divider with a wooden arch in the middle of it. The wooden arch had lights already wrapped around it and was dangling from the top of the arch. I was sitting in the food area at a table working on creating paper lanterns when I heard whispers and soft voices. Children's soft voices. It sounded like it was across the gym. So I just dismissed it as my imagination and kept working. A few moments later... I heard footsteps on the other side of the paper from me, and then violent slapping on the paper near me. Slapping. Freaked out, I picked up my stuff and moved to another table farther away from the paper walls. I heard another sound and looked up to see only one section of the Christmas lights on the divided arch violently swinging. After that, I ran out of the building and across the street to tell the rest of my committee. They told me... They told me to say a prayer or anything like that. And during the prom, the emergency light, a light that stays on near the exit for emergencies, kept blinking and not a patterned blinking either. I've, I've been in that building before during dances and it's never blinked before ever again. Afterwards, a teacher mentioned how she didn't like that building because it creeps her out. She said it used to be an Old Navy hospital. Not Old Navy, I love Old Navy. She said it used to be an old Navy hospital, and then when the floor was redone a few years back, they had little children's shoes underneath. Oh, God. Uh, that's the story. Oh, that's a good story. That's it's, a good short it's one. It's a creepy moment, like, mm, children, they demons, Charlie? These little demon girls smacking uh, the paper? I don't know. Maybe. So, my next story. Where do you think they were getting lunch, if you had to guess? From the cafeteria. No. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I'll, I'll accept that. You know yeah. the next story. All right. So if you're, I keep hearing stuff around us. There's like uh, frogs and um, stuff. There's just new frogs actually over here. There's a lady that creates. Bu- she alive? Yes. Oh, okay. And she has beautiful, beautiful bushes in her front yard. And I was walking by with Claire and and Joey, and she was like, 
Um, like she didn't say she was growing praying mantises, but she pretty much grows praying mantises. She's like, there's eight adults and like a bunch of little babies, and she's like, it's hard to look and see them right now. But she was like, it's not the frog, man. (laughs) Raising maybe, yeah. Yeah. But she's yeah. There's a whole bunch of. uh, That's cool. Those are a good thing to to do. Yeah. To raise. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. So this next story, I actually have two from the same person on the same file. And I feel like I should read them both. Yeah, they're both short. They're like a paragraph. Perfect. All right, so I'll go with... This is uh, Jessica from Missouri. Um, Quote. uh, County cursing back roads with my mom, stepdad, and my stepbrother, who is four years older than I am, than I was, and I was 11 years old at the time. And the house we lived in was a half mile from the train tracks and two miles from the highway on the gravel roads, which the only thing to do, which the only thing to do, even to this day, was there was a, a, a cruise back roads even at night. So they were cruising the back roads. This particular night, it was dark, and I don't remember a moon kind of night. No houses around, and we were... What are you doing? Are you just filming me? Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. All right particular night it was dark i don't remember the moon kind of night no houses around and we pulled up to a small creek bridge and we parked because dad needed to pee in the middle of the in the woods and it was acceptable back then so i guess that's what she says while we started on foot the front wheel shield while we started our front wheel shield headlights still on car running i was looking on the outside of the windows for the moon and i heard my mom and stepbrother freaking out. I looked up to see the darkness cross the edge of the other side of the road, and I listened to Mom and the, my brother deciding what they saw. No real sharp, no real shape aside from the oblong horizon like a cow, but no sharp eyes, no feet, just a dark blob in front of the car. We all know what cows look like, bears, etc., they have eyes and tails. Jalen, do you know what cow? Like? <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the speed it was traveling, Dad would have heard it if it had feet. But the silence, he didn't hear anything. To this day, none of us know what it was. So they saw this black thing. This blob. This blob. This blob. So this is her second story. Okay. Shit. Maybe I can read this one a little bit better. <laughs> um. Seven miles from the city limits of any town, Highway 65 headed to my home in Cal- Car- Carrollton, near crossroads of 65 and two black tops that led to a hail and Colma. Each town maybe has two stop signs and a distance from each other. My, lo- my location on Highway 65, no houses with a mile and a half on either direction I was headed um, sorry um, I grew up in this county so I know every area on this night in particular I was the only car on the road headed south on a huge fireball's bright red shot in the middle of the pasture across right. the back top of my left into the pasture of three of them at a distance but no one, uh, no obvious reasons like Roman candles or vehicle or bonfire I hit my brakes and shot my high, high beams into the area of the pasture. I was completely sober. It was about 11.30 at night on a Sunday in fall. No clue what it was. At a distance, it was a quarter size. So no one actually... So who knows the actual size up close? Weird. But not only, that, but not only lights that would be seen in Carroll County by me in the future with my kids. In this area, it's pretty flat, so we can see very pretty far away. I'm still confused by these three red lights shooting to this day. Whew. How long were you waiting to get that bug? It just landed on me. Okay. That, man. So, she saw aliens, I guess. <laughs> Black blob and aliens. Oh, man. I got one more story after this. Wow. Black blob and aliens. Why do I feel like I have more than... One story left. Um, because you... I did two in a row. You scared him with the bug slap. Oh, did I? Yeah, it was very violent, too. <laughs> now you see, like, where that... That Fresno Nightcrawler 
idea <laughs> came from. Charlie's a very violent man. Pretty aggressive. I got three more. Three more? No, I'll do two more. Let's see what this one is. <sighs> so I gotta finish that episode of stairs. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go to, can I say his name? I, think I don't know, I, can. I don't know. I can say, so this is okay. Caitlin. 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 This is Caitlin from Illinois, which is basically just Chicago's house. <laughs> <clears throat> Quote from Caitlin, I have a story about a UFO. It's not long. Okay. I live in Illinois, and I go by cat. And this was back in 2014. I had to take my brother to this video game release, and it was kind of late at night. While he was in there, I ran into a friend, and we were out in the parking lot talking. And at the same time, we both felt this urge to look up. And we just saw this colorful thing just sitting there way above us. And the second we went to pull our phones out, almost like the speed of light, this thing looks like it's going down fast, almost like it's literally going to crash into the strip mall next to us. And it left this glowing trail, but it faded so fast, and right when it looked like it was going to crash into the strip mall, it disappeared. I called my dad, and all he told me was to get my brother and to come home. The guy I was talking with never really felt scared about anything, but he was just as terrified as I was. We spent the whole night scared that they were going to come back for us since they knew that we saw them. This is the one and only time I've ever experienced anything like this. Unquote. They're like, yo, bro, that new Assassin's Creed is about to drop. <laughs> it's like, I'm about to drop. <laughs> now, very interesting, though. Like, the fact that it almost crashed and then it faded away. What are your it thoughts? It was pretty you're, embarrassed. You're the ufologist expert here. All right. You haven't written a book that. yet. But. I know, I know. I got to. I think, I don't know. That's really weird. Like, especially, like, it's not like it looked like it was going to crash in the distance. Yeah. It looked like it was going to crash into a building. Yeah, and then I building. assumed it just, like, zipped off. Like, it went, like, dark, right? Yeah. Like, it just went, like, camouflage on. Yep, and just drifted off. But why did it dive bomb them? Although, maybe it saw two people and was about to get them, and then it realized there were more people. Maybe. Trying to secretly show up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was 2014. Yeah. So, June wasn't quite what it is now. Right, that was during Obama's 2015, oh, I think. What? June? When June became Gay Pride Month, I think it was June, right? I don't or 2015, remember, I think. I, I think it was 2015, remember. if I remember correctly. All right. You want to do yours and then. Yeah, let me knock mine out. Knock it out. Knock it out. Just knock it out. Just knock it out. Just knock it out. <laughs> All right, so this is from Taylor. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. Oh, Taylor Swift. Is it for, I'm, a, I'm a Swifty, y'all. <laughs> no. I'm a Swifty. It is not Taylor Swift, unfortunately. It's okay. You don't though. know. It's okay. Oh, this is from Ohio. She was from Pennsylvania. It's like, where? Johnson City, Tennessee. Ohio and Tennessee. Okay. 2003 to 2012. Hi, guys. Love the podcast a lot. Love that. As a child, I had many experiences with the paranormal. Some of them I don't remember because I was so young. Um, 2003, I was two years old. Hmm. So they were born in 01? I guess so. Damn. Or no. 2000. So it's you in 2000. I thought you said, what did you 2003, say? 2003, they're, oh no, you're right, 01. 2003, I was two years old, and my sister, my parents, and I were living in my great-grandparents' old house. They had passed away. They had passed. My parents had moved in after my mom got pregnant with my sister. This house was in uh, Bell Valley, Ohio, population about 300, so it's a real small town in Ohio. You don't got to tell us. In the early 1900s, baby, uh, I don't really need to know about the history. Um, <laughs> the house that my parents lived in was actually the office of the coal mines. I promise. Nope. Um, I love that we'll get, like, the details. We'll get, like, literally a house blueprint. <laughs> we'll get every room that every house used to have, and we'll get exactly every description of a tree, and then we'll get, like, and then a ghost walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my great... Uh, my great-grandfather that lived in that... My great-grandfather 
that lived and died in the house worked as a coal miner. He actually passed away from black lung, which makes sense, working the coal mines and breathing the dust. Anyway, the house had always had a heavy feeling to it, even after we moved out. My sister was born first, and my parents said she would always look in the corners of the rooms and giggle and nothing. But babies are weird, so they just kind of brush it off. After I was born and old enough to talk, I would get really scared and cry out to my mom that a that a brown shadow figure was looking in our living room. And I would even point at the window when I said he was looking. As my mother... My mom thought what the... his bugs. Um, my mom was actually really scared. Um, she thought something was actually looking in the house. As it kept happening and my parents saw no one, they thought it was an imagination. Until one day, my dad thought to show me a picture of my great-grandfather. Sure enough, I pointed at it and said it was the brown figure. My parents thought I called him the brown figure was because of his face was always dirty for, from working the coal mines. This one I don't remember, but it sticks with my family and I. After we moved out, the house was empty for years. After we moved out, the house sat empty for years across the street from my grandparents' house. Every time you walked by, you could feel the heaviness and it almost felt like someone was watching you through the windows. Years later, the roof of the house collapsed on itself and that almost made the heaviest worse. Just in the summer of 2021, the house was torn down and I've never felt as weird, as eerie feeling as there again. Mm. Thanks for reading this if you do. All right. That's it. That's the end. It's a good story. Man, I... Have you ever felt like you were being watched? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt that before. Well, that's true. Your house is, is or was haunted. Well, yeah. But I've felt it here, too, in the attic. No. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, you, If you tell me that, tell me off air. <laughs> Claire's watching. Um, no, but, I mean, I felt it in... um. You know where I felt it? Yeah. It my grandma's house. Really? My grandpa died there. Oh. Did he watch you? Uh, before? He's a grumpy guy. Yeah. Man. It's just not like that's like obviously seeing stuff is very scary. But what is happening in this chat? What? See, what do you think? Um, What's well, not funny? I don't know. Oh, was that Claire? <laughs> That's Claire. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Chaos Kelpie? No, that's not. That. They're like the same color. Yeah. I see. There's no ghosts here. There's no ghosts here. They're all at Charlie's house. They're not here. <laughs> um, no, they're at Ben's house. They are absolutely at Ben's house. Ben has... I don't want to sign. It's not my story to tell, but Ben has some creepy stuff happening in his bathroom. Yeah. So I'm going to end this with somebody that is always active on our Instagram. Oh, and really? And once I say it, you'll hear Ben's voice. You want to hear my voice. Okay. Um, so this is from uh, Jess, who uh-huh. is Lotus Flowers. Oh, okay. Literally. She is 100% pregnant. I hear it all the time. Like, like when I start, because we do social media response. So people that consistently respond to our Monday social media questions, when I read your names when I'm on Instagram, because there's so many names that, that we talk about on the Patreon, I just hear Ben's voice saying it. Does Ben need assistance? Is he here? I don't think so. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Oh, it's Isaac. Isaac. So, oh. oh. He might. Uh, he, maybe. I thought you meant because he was... With his house. I thought you meant because he was old. Uh, he's he not m- that old. He might need some He help. might. He might. Uh, Although he's... I don't know. It's... I don't know. It's not our story to tell, really. It's not... It, I don't think it's anything um, malevolent. I, I've never been there. Yeah, I, I have. and But it's never... Well, I wasn't alone. I was like, could you like... Could I take a shower? <laughs> <laughs> your house and could you like step in leave me alone yeah just give me like 10 minutes um, your house yeah where's the towels so <laughs> so this is from lotus flowers i hear your name all the time on patreon and now i'm telling your story um quote hey it's charlie and tyler or was it tyler and charlie <laughs> 
Um, that was a joke we did, and that was probably like a year ago. That's an old joke. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jess Lotus Flowers on Instagram. Please let us know who you are on Instagram because um, I love that. Actually, that's fantastic. It, it actually connects dots for us. We can see faces. We understand yeah. a little we, better. Yeah. Uh, we spend eighty percent of our time on Instagram. Yeah. It's um, not healthy. I'm so excited to be telling a story that I love sharing. My family is really into the paranormal. What happens in the afterlife? We're all big believers. My dad and sister is particular. I've shared some really weird moments. The first one happened when I was about six and my sister was about 12. At this time, my grandparents on my father's side had both passed. There are two parts. She said, wait, no volumes to this story. Did we make a joke about volumes? I feel like the house, it was two stories and it had a basement. The basement was where the washer and the dryer was, as it should be. And my dad spent most of the time there. My sister was down in the basement grabbing something from the dryer, saw my dad in his rocking chair, which she said is already kind of creepy, and she said something to him, and he didn't answer, so she just assumed that he was asleep. Shortly after, she realized it wasn't him, and she went upstairs and she told her mom. Not too long before that, her dad had a similar experience, came upstairs, and told her mom. So, of course, my mom's like, you know, what the fuck? What's going on? So, she told them they both shared the same experience. So, me, her, being freaked out, told them to tell the ghost to leave me alone. Fast forward a few years, and now we're living in Florida. We were having a family dinner, although I can't remember if it was a holiday or not, and my dad was telling the story of a weird dream he had about his father. He was standing at the front door of his old home in New York, waving down to him and my sister in the car. Y'all. My sister had the same dream as my dad, but from the perspective, from the car, they both understandingly freaked out. The two of them seem especially in tune with the spirits. They still seem to keep away from me, which is totally fine. Have you shared the same dream as someone else? Um, no. Although I did have a dream recently. I want to tell you. Charlie doesn't dream. I keep looking here like the camera's here. I'm sorry. I know. Charlie does not dream. I did have a dream recently I wanted to share with you, especially. Um, I told Steph because it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Oh, my my man doesn't dream ever, and he has a nightmare? (laughs) Yeah, dude. Did you have caffeine before bed? Oh, always. Um, (laughs) I'm going to actually sit in my chair. So, it basically went like this. It was, I was at my house doing something for the podcast. (laughs) That's life. That's life. I was, like, editing. And I looked up, and there was a little girl standing there. She was holding a board. No! Holding a, like, a board, and I looked at it. It was a Ouija board. And she said... Uh, her eyes turned black. No! And she said, do you want to play with us? No! And it wasn't just a little girl's voice. It was like a demonic pitch over it. I woke up. I, w- I woke up, and I was freaked out. Um, oh... Uh, so that's the first time I've had it in a while. Um, Dude. It's funny, because today I told Tyler, I was like, Dude, we got to do a Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, it seems a little silly now. When did you have this dream? Uh, like a week ago. Do you Have you looked into it, or do you think it's just like... You, I, I mean, we deal with I, this creepy stuff all the time. I don't look time. into it, no. Yeah, we talk about a lot of creepy stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, so those are stories. We we did, if you count all three streams we've done tonight, <laughs> we've done 16 or 15. Um, yeah, but I appreciate everybody hanging, in, hanging with in with us, especially everybody who's stuck for this third one. I hope I hope the audio quality has stuck around. I hope that the video quality has stuck around. Um, I hope everything um, looks and sounds good. Um, man, Black Eyed Kids, that was, uh, that, was good, I know. that was a good episode. I mentioned that recently on our Q&A. Oh, really? They said, like, what cryptid have you learned more about than you oh, wanted an episode about? Yeah. I said, I've learned more about them, but I don't think it's enough for an episode. Like, yeah. just, like, enough stories. That was when, I remember we were doing our old podcast. Yeah, and... I introduced that to you. Okay, good. I'm glad that we've, there's been no issue since we started back up. That's awesome. But when we were doing our old podcast, where it was, um, it, it was a variety show. Mm-hmm. And, and, but one of the topics we did was paranormal, and Charlie was like, I have a great one for you. And I don't want to spoil it. And then you told me it was Black Eyed Kids. And it was the first time I ever heard it. And I remember that night when you left, I, I tried walking my dog. And I got to the end of my street. And I was like, nerp. <laughs> I'm going right back. And that's how I knew I succeeded. So what are your th- what are you, what's everyone's thoughts on like this type of format? 
versus obviously the main podcast. Obviously, 90% of our energy is always going to be the main podcast. But what is the feeling the, the, the feeling of what how this went? Because we have something we want to start implementing, but I want to make sure that it was actually something. Hey, hey thank happy you. two years. Thank you, thank Orca. You. How's, how's this been? Because if, if, if it's been all right, we, Did might, it get better? we might have an announcement. Depending on what you guys say. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to really change the next two minutes. In I love things. it. You loved it? Yeah. I feel like you're biased. This... This was so on the fly. <laughs> I love this background, though. I could stare at that starry. If it, oh my gosh, I loved it. Twitch streamers are really fun. That's awesome. Okay. All right, yeah. So okay. this is this is something we've been talking about. Every we, listen, we talk about things for like five months, <laughs> and then yes. we do them. Um, it's this, our way. That's why this Twitch thing tonight was so rough because we're, we usually normally stuff out normally more. things are very tied in together but this is something we've been discussing actually and we just changed it two days ago because remember it's gonna be thursday and ben we mm-hmm, talked about it mm-hmm. so i can't guarantee it's gonna be every single week but we're gonna do our best to make it like 95 percent of the time because we already dedicate these two days to the podcast anyway what we're gonna try to do is every single tuesday at eight o'clock p.m eastern time we're going to try and do a live Twitch, which is like an extended discussion of that day's episode. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, like this Tuesday, two days ago, we would have jumped on here on Twitch at 8 o'clock, and it would be an extended discussion mm-hmm. of Bloody Mary, where, you, you know, if you listen to the episode, it, it, the same day, if you listen to the episode that day, then we can all talk about it. You guys can give you your opinions and, you know, kind of create this Twitch community which would be more immediate <laughs> responding than like I, think, I love the DMs. They yeah, to do it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's sirens. We're in we're, we're in not Canton. quite in Akron, no, but we're in Canton. Um but that's that's something we're thinking about doing. Yeah. So I I think that'd be pretty exciting. And uh Ghost type ghost. Oh, is he here? Ghost type ghost oh. coming at the end or did he leave? I don't know what that rating is rating. Oh, it means he's bringing everyone uh, from listen. his let me tell you, he's I know what it means. From, okay. I know what it means. I wasn't sure if he knew. But we're like, they're kind of done. When there's nothing much <laughs> This is about on. the end here. This is when we're like, like, you came at the hype time where we're talking about what we're going to do. So Tuesdays, 8 o'clock, Twitch, tell your friends, bring the raid. Shout out to jump on a game with y'all on Twitch. You guys should play Dead by Daylight with your viewers. Charlie ah. was thinking about potentially doing that. I was that, actually talking about that. But you're doing um, Last of Us. I'm doing The Last of Us. Although, maybe when I finish it, I'll play a thing of Dead by Daylight. I'd love to play with Alex if he's watching. If you're watching. If ghost he's type watching. Ghost. Maybe we can do Gotta like a keep going now. Collab. What, what do you want me to do? I got one more story. Okay, you want to do one more? I got one Is this more an story. encore? It, you know what? It's not It's not quite um, Freebird. <laughs> it's a little shorter. <laughs> but... I could sing the guitar solo, if you want. I can, uh, I can, I can whip this up real quick. This is now, but see, now y'all are gonna be like, "Why'd you skip over it? It wasn't intentional." It, it just, was just we were about done. You know, I actually keep keeping it 100 percent transparent. I figured we'd do another one of these sometime, and uh, it was kind of one I was saving for that, but not because it's, it's okay. ama- not because it's amazing. Unless you're in here, Ricky, then it's the, be- <laughs> <laughs> it's the best one we had all night. Actually. I've never heard anything better. Actually, yeah, I was just getting it tattooed on my back uh, in Spanish. Um, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Yeah, thank you, Alex. So, yeah, appreciate the raid, Alex. I hope you're having a great day. I hope your podcast, uh, the Indigo yeah. Plateau Show. I just listened to the it. Indigo Plateau Show. I just listened to it on Spotify today yeah i did they did talked you? about me they talked about you yeah because they had all the listeners um create a gym and i was um number eight one of the number eights or two number a gym? eights like deadlift yeah. no like a pokemon gym tyler like little pikachu deadlift and he called me celio celia which is my gamer tag and i was like what is that i'm charlie although i mean they all go by their gamer tags like yeah the mad scientist i'm still listen the calves are going to be back soon and i'm still ferret allen which is the best i'm not anymore i'm myself actually on twitch on our oh, on our discord oh you're flexing yeah you're like yeah i know i'm i'm co-host <laughs> y'all, y'all know what it is all right so here's here's the last story it takes place from oklahoma which is where baker mayfield played and now he's playing in carolina rip quote from ricky 
Wait, unless you told me not to say his name. No, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't edit that so, out, dude. <laughs> uh, Sophie or... Uh, Sophie. Yeah. Okay, so, quote, Here in Oklahoma, we have a lot of different legends from the Tulsa Hex House. Bigfoot, uh, Witch in the Well, which I personally think I could have had an encounter with. From aliens to giant octopus and lakes to the Girl Scout murders and what lives in caves around the camp. The Purple Church is definitely one of our most interesting. Some say that the church was abandoned and is a part of satanic rituals. Others say that it's a portal to hell. It sounds like it's his hell town. Um, some also say that it was a satanic church in the basement where they held human sacrifice and animal sacrifice. The church is an actual place and I've seen it with my own eyes. It's an extremely sketchy drive through the woods on a nearly impossible road which is now on private property. When we were there, you hear all kinds of things in the woods, and part of the legend is there's creatures or demons in the woods at night. <laughs> at night. At night. There are people that have reported seeing unknown entities with red eyes, claws, fangs, and other random appendages. <laughs> <laughs> See, if this was not live... No, that would be a funny moment. This wasn't. Uh, this is one of the most spooky places in the state, and there's tons of research that can be done on the place. I feel like that's he's not telling us something. Even photographs. This is one of those legends where teenagers especially enjoy to visit. I don't know if that's photo. Some say that they've been shot at while entering the property, which he did say was private. Yeah. Some say they get extremely hot. Some say they get scratches on them just walking down the road when there's absolutely no trees nearby, and someone even said the trees attacked him the trees on the way to the him. church's basement. It's this very is in Evil Oklahoma, Dead. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, this property still has the stains in the basement of blood sacrifices Jeez. and even a pentagram engraved in the concrete floor used for rituals. Or it could all be a hoax. Well. My time there was not as interesting, but we did hear things in the woods that were unexplainable. It almost sounded like a somebody crying nearby but I was unable to see anything anyway. And upon approaching the church, the party I was with got really got an uncontrollable urge to leave, even though we've investigated quite a few different places. But this one absolutely takes the cake. This is Ricky, and we appreciate <laughs> you guys do a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. <sighs> so. That was actually really good. I've been to Oklahoma. I ain't seen any of that shit. Have you been I, to Tulsa? No, I've been to Oklahoma City, okay. and I've seen the Cavaliers destroy... The thunder. Someone asked us on Instagram if you've been to Tulsa. Me? Us. If we'd been to Tulsa. Oh. Um, hmm. Do you go through Tulsa to get to Oklahoma City? I don't know. McAllister? Did you stop at a tourist attraction in, in Tulsa? Then I'll tell her that you didn't go there. Okay. Yeah, let her know. What are all these mountains I'm seeing? I don't know. What is happening in I the chat? I don't know. They're just, they're just things. They're just having fun. Okay. All That's right. what this is for. That's what this is for. So, Okay. Takeaways, right? Takeaways. Takeaways. One, there's a no, lot of... To short... quote Dan Cummins, top Could, five takeaways. Try imagine us turning a full episode into any of those stories you heard tonight. It wouldn't happen. So no. I'm very thankful for y'all sticking around. There's almost 30 of you now. There's literally almost 30 of you, and this is our third stream tonight. We messed up so many times. First, it was a black screen. <laughs> then we were laggy. I yeah. had to leave because my computer was about to die, and I came back down here. But y'all stuck around. Almost 30 of you. It's amazing. It's yeah. appreciative. Fantastic. So here's the takeaways. We've learned how to do this better. Much better. Uh, next time. There, there's still more we can learn. Welcome to streaming. Alex, I literally <laughs> said text I said text Alex. He's like, he's doing his show right now. And I said some bad words. <laughs> he did. Um, we, we, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can talk about that later. Um, <laughs> the takeaways: one, uh, appreciate everybody for supporting us. The, um, the fact being around two years was going to happen no matter what, because Charlie and I pride ourselves. If you count our previous podcast, in a yeah. hundred and four weeks, we've never missed an episode. And 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 whether they're all good, not always the case. Whether we're always both on, funny, informative, entertaining, not always. Not always. But the fact that we in three years. Counting our old podcast, we have never missed a week. I, I stand on that hill. I'm very proud. But also, like that, that was gonna happen. But the like the million downloads, like never. That was crazy. We sat on that table. There's a podcast that we were like, we thought we could get on that level. It was called. Yeah. The, it was called the Segway Podcast. It was not good. Um, it was, no, 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 no. The content was okay, 
but the idea behind it was not there. It was like training wheels. Yes. It taught us what to do. See, this is like our twitching training wheels. Um, but we sat right over there. I'll, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys our actual goal. We wanted to get 5,000 downloads in seven months. Yeah, we thought that was the attainable goal, and we blew that out of the water. That was our legitimate goal. We wanted to get 5,000 downloads in seven months. And because our previous podcast had 2,000 downloads in one year. Yeah. But you know what? We hit our goal. We killed it because of you guys. Yes. Um, so we appreciate all of the engagement. And we're trying We're trying out different things. Um, like Alex, Ghost Type Gokes in the chat. He's like a premium. What am, is that? Butt? What? He's, it looked like a butt. Oh. He's a premium po- uh, tw- uh, Twitch, Twitcher. Twitcher. He's Twitch also star? a YouTuber. I consider, I've always considered you more of a YouTuber than anything because that's just that's what I grew up on Alex is so funny I love watching his Outlast play Alex is one of the funniest and people Spiral. I know yeah I, just, I mean aside from Tyler maybe I mean you both are like I think you're both like yeah. top quality funny people so shout out Ghost Type Ghost shout out Jalen I don't know what your tag is in here Jalen you pick a new tag for every is it every Honda platform. Civic it's, uh, I don't know <laughs> Jalen you, you change all the time but shout out Jalen you you're awesome. You um, that's that's the second thing. That's yeah. the second thing is today beyond the downloads and two year anniversary. Um, we dropped our episode series, which has been. I mean, Jalen knows it's been in the yeah. process for a long, long, long She's time. Like, I know it's something I was really inspired by some music I like, and I wanted to start putting out designs that were specific to episodes. I didn't know how it would go, but I appreciate that there's people that like that. Um, I I appreciate that people even care so i'm excited to do this but but the third takeaway is we're going to try and keep this rolling so in in addition to charlie jumping on and playing video games we're going to try and use twitch in a different way very similar to this Mm -hmm. where we're going to try and get on every tuesday around eight o'clock p.m Mm -hmm. and it's going to be an extended discussion so if you listen to the episode on the day it drops on tuesday um you'll be able to jump on here and we can talk about that episode in more detail. Yeah. And I, I love to hear your theories about what we just talked about. You are things that we maybe missed or things that we explained well and you appreciated. Yeah. And originally we were going to do it on Thursday. Um, yeah. And then we were brainstorming two days ago. <laughs> we'll probably do the podcast and live show category for that. This was just, this was like very informal. Yeah. Um, which is actually what I want all of it to be. Cause you should see like if, if I, the Halloween, I love doing the Halloween live shows. I get so stressed out of my mind mm. and I need to watch Charlie's podcasts because what? when he's like, my podcasts are going on live tours. I'm like, the fuck is a live oh. podcast show? I, well, I was going to actually, I was thinking I was going to buy that and send it to you. Yeah. I've heard that for a year. I'm going to buy it tomorrow. Who is, it, is it scared to death or is it last podcast? Uh, last podcast. Is it Red Rocks? No, they didn't uh, do that one live. They did uh, Baton Rouge, I think, is live. If we ever do Red Rocks, I'm going to pay one of y'all to just be a sniper. And just as soon as it's <laughs> over, me. just right. Because it's if I perform Red Rocks in any shape or form, it's going to be amazing. Don't actually kill me. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me. Um, Slowly disarms, unhappily. Hit that safety. But, uh, I yeah, I think... If we could, if we knew how to raid, we'd probably do that. Yeah, but we don't. Well, so. I don't. We don't think we have anyone raid to right now. No, we don't have friends. <laughs> Our friends are here. So. Yeah, right. So th- you know what this? You know what? this is amazing. This is the first time I've ever twitched, and this is gonna be the first time that I ever get to end a a twitch on my terms. <laughs> this is my third time today. But I'm getting. We get to end it on our terms. Yeah. We tell you twitch when we're done. And I will see you guys on when. What's today? Today's Thursday. I will be see you guys on Sunday. What are you? Are you gonna play? Are you gonna play uh, a different game? Or are you gonna play? I'm playing Last of Us. Last of Us. Okay. Okay. Play Last of Us. So he's, it's gonna be Last of Us Part Two, but it's the Last of Us One, but it's the second part. Yes. Of it. But anyway, thank you everybody. Um, I'm bad at goodbyes. I draw them out, and I hope people just start leaving. But you're all still here. <laughs> That's okay though. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Appreciate it. Remember, if you buy a shirt today, tomorrow, over the weekend, yeah, send us, us send us a screenshot as soon as you get it. Just send like it says, "Oh, thanks for ordering." Whatever. Send us a screenshot. DM us, uh, email us, and and we'll send you a free sticker and we'll sign a not dear print. But everybody have a great night. Thank you for the engagement. Thank you for two years of awesomeness, and. Uh, Oh, as always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. There we go.